Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the daily chart of silver, and you can see this goes back to the top that we had back in 2011. Actually, this isn't the furthest one that we had. This is the $44 one. Uh, the other one was 48 bucks. But you can see the the major major trend line here. Um, it's it's not drawn perfectly. There's no way to draw it perfectly because it doesn't have. Um, let me put the arrows in here. It doesn't have a, a lineup with that perfectly. It misses these two by a little bit, but you can see that it comes to this test here where it fails and then it breaks through and it also has a test off of the low and then it bounces back up. So it, it's definitely the trend has been violated, although it's on a sideways basis it still seems to be a bottom there was that rapid test at the low and a snapback uh, and then of course there was this test so we are above that line the other thing to keep an eye on here is the uh, MACD has has not only turned up on the daily but it's actually crossed the zero line so it's in a positive now if we pull back out to the weekly you can see that we have a rising MACD but it's still below the zero line so we're really not going to expect to see any significant rally until we get across up above that line now it's been down below that line you can see um, we've actually been below the zero line there's a brief touch point but not for both lines here but we've really been below that line since uh, January 2013 so over two years, um, and then really there's just a brief one up above that, and that takes us all the way back to, you know, uh, late 2011. So a very, very long decline that appears to be turning around. Now, it's still a fantastic stacking time. I've got a couple of um, member deals that I've isolated. These There's one I've been watching. I, I seriously consider getting this coin, but for certain reasons I can't do that. And so I wanted to give this one to the members. The other one's just kind of a coin that I really think is a great buy. So this is just going to be kind of a best buys episode. But before we get to those, I want to read this article from Zero Hedge. This is Germany generously offers to freeze the bank accounts of wealthy Greeks. Now, if you remember when the Syriza party was first elected, I told you that I did not believe that there was going to be any Grexit. And the reason why is because they elected communists. These were people that the the guy they elected was, uh, he grew up, he was a communist his whole life, you know, a member of the Communist Party. And uh, they have uh, a communist finance minister. And what do communists believe in? Well, ultimately, they think that capitalism is the problem and that uh, everybody should get something for free. That's basically what it amounts to. Um, and, you know, you already had the tipping point in Greece where, where, and we're seeing it rapidly happen in the United States. We're going to get communism by default here. But they already had reached the tipping point where such a large number of the population was working for the government that once, you know, you cross that line, whatever that line is, and it's different in different countries, it's different in different economies, different societies, different nations, it's different in different places. Sorry about that. And so you can't say that there's a, a specific line where you cross it, but there is a line where you cross it where too many people are working for the government. And then what happens is in a democracy, you remember the, fa the famous quote, democracy can only last uh, long as long as the people... Uh, discover they have the ability to vote themselves free money from the treasury or something like that. And that's basically what's happened. So uh, I predicted when this occurred that, that uh, the Syriza party would knuckle under to the uh, EU, continue paying these debts. I said what I thought they should do, and that is to walk away and just uh, default on those debts. Go with the new currency, but go with the new system as well, which is going to include, if, if you do it right, it would include tax cuts, uh, greatly reduced taxes, 
Uh, we know that if taxes are reasonable, people will pay them, even Greeks, and then have a free market system uh, begin to trade with other countries, Russia and China. But that's, you know, that's the exact opposite of what communists believe in. So what, what do communists believe in? They, they believe in taking something from one person and giving it to another. So we can see here that now Germany is going to be involved in trying to basically seize the bank accounts of wealthy Greeks. Let's read some of this. Back in 2013, when one cuts through the rhetoric and posturing what the Cyprus depositor bail-in and subsequent capital controls were all about, was an attempt to confiscate deposits of ultra-wealthy ultra Russian billionaires held by the banks of this beloved Russian oligarchy offshore tax haven. And that is indeed what was behind it. At least that was the theory. In practice, the wealthiest Russians got advance notice of what the Greek government in collaboration with the Eurogroup was planning and quietly moved their funds to even safer offshore venues, leaving the local population to pick up the pieces. And by the way, that's always going to be the case. The wealthy are always going to move before you try to take their money. Uh, one of the reasons, that's why they're wealthy. They wouldn't be wealthy if uh, someone could just come and take their money. It doesn't work like that. So what's going to happen? Well, of course, it's going to be the further impoverishment of Greece. Just like we're seeing in Venezuela, the real businessmen, the real uh, people who you know, make the economy run, they're just going to leave. And they, it's already a mass exodus down there. And it's going to be a mass exodus in Greece. Fast forward two years later, when Greece is on the verge of complete monetary collapse, and which is now scrambling to borrow funds from local pensions, and that's what's coming here. They're going after. They're going to go after the pensions, local pensions, and other public sources of scarce capital, just to remain in compliance with IMF debt repayments and to avoid a hard default. In fact, according to some, Greece may not have the funds to make its next mandatory payments due on April 9th. The IMF, with long overdue Greek exit from the eurozone, to follow in due course. Well, maybe not, because Germany has been kind enough to provide an idea where the foundering Greek radical leftist government can find some additional funds by freezing and raiding the bank accounts of wealthy Greeks. Of course, the legal loophole provision is that only those suspected, not convicted, of tax fraud would be eligible for such an asset freeze. However, since in Greece virtually nobody pays the amount of tax they should, Recall a month ago, the Wall Street Journal wrote, Greeks consider taxes as theft, said Arist Aristides Hatsis, an associate professor of law and economics at the University of Athens. Quote, normally taxes are considered the price you have to pay for a just state, but this is not accepted by the Greek mentality. Yeah, and it's not a just state either. This is essentially a carte blanche to freeze and raid the funds of the wealthiest Greeks who have bank accounts in Germany and soon in all other European nations, no questions asked. Dow Jones reports, Germany would be willing to freeze the bank accounts of wealthy Greeks suspected of tax fraud. Economics Minister Sigmar Gabriel said in a newspaper interview on Saturday, quote, we have offered to freeze the bank accounts of wealthy Greek citizens that owe taxes to their homeland. The offer stands, but for that to happen, the Greek financial authorities need to get active, Mr. Gabriel told the German daily Rheinisch Post. Europe is willing to help Greece, but the Greek government's acceptance of previously agreed upon reforms is a prerequisite. He reiterated Greece's problems aren't a result of Troika initiatives, referring to the International Monetary Fund, the European Union, and the European Central Bank. He added, Greece is a victim of its own economic and political elite, Mr. Gabriel said. But wait, we thought it was austerity that was to blame for everything. Does Mr. Gabriel gasp suggest that austerity is the name that crony corrupt incompetent European politicians have been giving to their actions to enable the unprecedented theft and transfer of wealth that has taken place in Europe in the past five years. In this case, Gabriel is spot on with his assessment, one which we said was precisely the case two years ago, and as such, Germany has a solution, a one-time sovereign bail-in funded by the wealthiest Greeks. And here it gets interesting because suddenly the options become very clear for said wealthy tax-avoiding Greeks align with Russia or suffer deposit confiscation at the hands of Germany or Switzerland or France or any other nation that has been alienated by the Syriza government. To be sure, Germany tried to smooth out this contingency. Turning to Russia, Mr. Gabriel said he doubts Greece would seek to replace European partners with an allegiance to Russia. Quote, even if I try, I can't imagine that anyone in Athens is seriously considered turning their backs 
on Europe to throw themselves into the arms of Russia, and I also doubt that Moscow feels any pressing need to gladly fulfill some of Greece's financial pipe dreams given the economic and financial situation there. Now, you know, I've already covered that if Greece stiffed the IMF and the EU and the Troika and told them to just basically go away and uh, not pay any of that debt, then there's no reason why they couldn't put their economy in order and trade with Russia and China. But that's not what they're going to do. Perhaps keep in mind that it was the threat of the world's wealthiest losing all their accumulated wealth that forced the Fed and its central bank peers to launch the biggest ever bailout of capitalism in 2008 at the cost of destroying livelihoods for hundreds of millions of middle class Americans and Europeans because when there is nothing but desperation left, the rich do silly self-serving things. Now let me point out here the biggest bailout biggest ever bailout of capitalism. Now, that actually is a contradiction in it's a it's a oxymoron. You can't have a bailout of capitalism because if you have a bailout, it's not capitalism. The essence of capitalism is that the people who take the risk suffer the loss and the people who are rewarded are the ones who made the right bets and the people who lose are the ones who made the wrong bets and then the people who are smarter win and that's how it works that's the whole system if you take away that incentive then you've broken the system now let me show you this quote from George Bush I think you probably remember at the time this is a direct quote from Bush when the crisis happened this is from an article December 18th of 2008 and this is the quote yesterday on CNN used yet another line of double think when during an interview while visually flustered and strained, uh, Bush said he has, quote, abandoned free market principles to save the free market system. See, I didn't make that up. Now that's, <laughs> let me just read it. This logic is just pure idiotic words from a beat down leader who is doing everything he can to save his legacy. Sure, he does not want to be the next Hoover though I've argued that he actually is, but that only provides a level of explanation, not an excuse. So that is just, uh, as he says, double think. It's ridiculous. You can't, it's like in Waco, they said, well, we had to burn all the children to save them. I mean, it's, it's utterly absurd. You cannot have a bailout of capitalism because if you bail it out, it's no longer capitalism. Uh, and a bailout of capitalism at the cost of destroying the livelihoods of hundreds of millions. The question is, will Greece's wealthiest make it clear to, uh, to Cyprus that their money is off limits and unless he can find a euro-facing resolution that preserves their wealth, then he should promptly turn to Putin. With Greek money about to run out in coming days, we should have the answer very soon. Well, I already told you, and I was right, they weren't going to walk away from the EU, although that's exactly what they should do, but uh, they're being held hostage by the Troika, the European bankers, and uh, all these people, the IMF, the World Bank, and uh, they really should go it on their own, but they can't. They elected communists, and if you have a, a, a country with citizens who actually elect communists in a democratic election that tells you enough about the people they're not ready to go it on their own as they say about communism it literally ruins generations of people socialism and communism ruin entire generations because uh, they they believe that someone owes them something and so Greece is going to continue to go down it's going to go the way of Venezuela um, and what's going to happen is exactly what's happening in Venezuela, as I pointed out, that the, the businessmen that want to make a profit, they're going to leave and go to Colombia. They're going to leave and go to Panama. They're going to leave Panama right now is seeing a huge influx of businessmen and capitalists coming in there that are fleeing Venezuela. You're going to see the same thing in Greece. You're going to see a huge uh, exodus of wealthy Greeks, and Greece is just going to spiral down into even a worse situation. So... Uh, that's that. So let's take a look at these picks that I was talking about. Now the first one I'm going to give you is just the generic one. Um, this is the one that I consider the best deal out there. Now I went and checked the half ounce 
uh, horses on Atmex, and they're currently asking $34 a coin for the half ounce horses. And we picked up a ton of those back at $12.20, $12, $13. You can see these are the same thing. This is exactly what I got my horses for, $12.20. And uh, there's only about 506 left of these. The, the one ounce goats are already up to 28 bucks a piece. So there's already some inflation. But again, those one ounce goats are cheaper than... Um, the one ounce lunars have been for a few years because the horses never went below 37 bucks and of course the dragons never started out at 100 bucks never went below um 50 really so that's the first pick i think that's going to be a good one i think that's going to be a can't lose but the biggest one is going to be this one that i found this is really this is the one that i was going to buy them all myself and uh, i just couldn't swing it because it had to do with international wire transfers and I'm not in a position right now with not enough dry powder and being uh, in between things I'm just not really willing to deal with that sort of risk of an international wire transfer I did call them I made a call to uh, this coin shop in Australia it's KJC coins I found this coin while searching uh, just my typical searches for lunar series you can see it's the one ounce 2014 year of the horse coin and you can see they're 3688 now that's not that great of a deal until you realize the exchange rate because when you take 3688 in Australian dollars and this is what you can see right here all pricing is on Australian dollars and I'll show you when I show you what they're asking for the goat 3208 okay so if you do the calculations here, and that's right here. If you convert 36.88 into American dollars, you can see you get 28.15. So we're talking about having about, how many horses are there? Uh, let's check it. They have 360 left. When I first found it, they had about six or 700, and I was seriously thinking about buying the whole lot, but um, they started, they're they starting to go real fast now. So I wanted to get the members onto this. Um, yes, it is quite a bit above spot, uh, a good $10 or so above spot, but then, or above uh, the regular coins above spot. You know, it's a $10 premium, but it's, the one ounce year of the horse for 28 bucks. I bought a roll for 37. I only bought 20 of them. They never really came down below that. I never saw the coin below 37 bucks. Here's the one ounce horse. If you can swing, which I couldn't swing, or if you're an Australian viewer, if you can swing the international wire transfer, or if you can just go ahead and pick them up, you can actually go there. I called them on the phone. You can go in and pick them up uh, at the store. Um, I think this one's in Sydney, but don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, I did call them, and uh, you have to put 10% down on a credit card. And one of the big sticklers for me was that you can't pay for the entire order with credit cards. So you put 10% down, and the other 90% you have to actually wire the money. For me, that would be an international wire transfer, and I'm not really comfortable with that at this time. So there are that 300 left and uh, I, I think that uh, the members really should grab those up I'm not recommending that I'm just saying this is for me one of the biggest can't lose deals out there where you're going to be able to pick up uh, 2014 year of the horse one ounce coin for $28 US so those are my picks the half ounce goat for about 1220 and the one ounce horse for about 28 bucks incredible so back to the silver chart you can see here it is a long time forming the bottom but again bottoms are formed um, by kind of a sideways action it's the sideways action that eventually breaks you out of the downtrend uh, you can see back in 2008 there was a lot of sideways action there was some down here at the bottom there was also some right in here uh, before the ultimate takeoff when the, the next QE was announced 
and I really honestly think there will be another QE announced. Uh, they're trying to spin things right now and make it look like the economy is better than it is, uh, but really the economy is already falling hard. It's only going to take just some bad news. I'm not sure what that could be, but some serious bad news, and they could immediately turn on a dime and have the Fed turn around and just start announce QE4. And we'll talk to you next time.